it's also interesting that uh, in my personal experience here in Italy, um, not about solution focus because here, as I say, are relative um, unknown, relative unknown, um, but um, uh, more and more people, more and more clients are asking for uh, brief therapy because it's brief, you yeah. know, so um, it could be convenient for um, for the psychologist therapist's point of view, but not from the client's point of view. I think um, that's right. And I, I think it's growing here too. I mean, interestingly, in one of the, you know, um, not popular, but reasonably well-read UK newspapers, there was an article on Solution Focus on Saturday. Yeah. And um, that's unusual. That's unusual. Um, but it is beginning to happen. Yeah. And people are, the idea of a brief therapy, I think, is developing. And I think that actually, in some senses, it fits the changing culture set of ideas because i think that people are becoming less the word i would use is less diffident less so well in the past i think there was a lot of respect yeah. for professionals oh yeah the, the doctor told me to do this yeah. Yeah, yeah so i have to do this you know, if the doctor keeps you waiting for two hours outside, that was okay, because the doctor's time is precious in yeah. some senses. Whereas I think now people are challenging that view yeah. increasingly and are increasingly challenging the idea that the doctor or the expert or the specialist is always right. Mm -hmm. And solution focus, I think, begins to change the relationship yeah. between the, the professional and the client. And actually, in many ways, centers the client's thinking. Yeah. Now, my thinking is important too, but it centers the client's thinking. Mm -hmm. And I think in some ways that that increasingly fits the, the spirit of the times, the zeitgeist in that sense i think it fits yeah that spirit of the time so i i do see brief therapy as having a very oh, a, a very very strong future actually yeah it is happening and it will happen and it will happen we are totally we are living in a more i totally agree we're living in a more um how to say horizontal roles you know not vertical so uh, listen uh heaven um coming back to practice of solution focus um what is your most important challenge when you practice solution focus uh what is more challenging for you goodness i mean look i mean to say there's one um you know um is probably too complimentary to me. <laughs> there are a number of things I think I struggle with each and every time I see people. <laughs> um, well, one is just, I suppose, disciplining my listening. Oh, and yeah. even after more than 30 years of doing this, I can still have thoughts when I'm working with someone that are unhelpful to the process mm. and I have to absolutely notice that and discipline myself so thoughts can come into my head that come from my old expert world rather than come from listening to the yeah. person I'm sitting with and the challenge for me is absolutely to notice that and to say, gosh, interesting idea, and not useful for solution focus. I'll put that aside and carry on listening. So I think that's still one challenge. And another challenge is truly trusting the process, 
truly trust in the process. You know, I sometimes think I meet people who arrive and who are very, nowadays I see them over, over Zoom, but who are very distressed. You know, life is very tough for them. And every now and again, I can have the thought, is this all I'm going to do? Hmm. You know, I'm going to find out what they want. I'm going to invite them to describe the future that contains their best hopes. I'm going to invite them to be curious about and to notice the things that they're already doing that fit with that. Is that it? Yeah. Is that all? And I have to remind myself, I say, yup, that's what I do. It seems to work. Get on with it. Yeah. And so listening, listening to the client rather than to the expert dialogue in my head, truly trusting, trusting the model, trusting the model and trusting the client. Yeah. You know, that actually, if I can talk well enough if i can be if i can invite people effectively enough into describing their life in this way that people really can change themselves yeah they really can't do that they can make changes changes will emerge that's a better way of putting it changes will emerge in the talking if i can be I suppose, effective enough in inviting them into these sorts of descriptions. What do they want? Life that contains that best, those best hopes, what they're doing that fits with it. And so, you know, even after 30, 33 years of doing this, I still have to work at it. I still have to discipline myself in that way. It's hard. It's very hard. I, I agree because um, I think partially because um, we've been tough to be the expert and uh, it's also because probably, I don't know, I'm just thinking because um, being solution focused, it's a totally changing of mind, not only in therapy, yeah, but considering that uh, people can find their solution, considering that Kevin for um, very difficult mental health problems uh, could be enough, enough, I say, um, asking people to describe their preferred future or what is working now, or what will work when they will be just one small step up it seems it's not enough you, you need no. to do some very complicated stuff uh, what is complicated is the theory is yeah. the theory um I, know. I mean what what i what's interesting for me as visual focus practitioner is that you know someone could come along and maybe they're hearing voices yeah. that bother them you know, someone else can come along who struggles to get out of bed or to open the door or to answer the phone or all sorts of things. Or, you know, someone who is drinking more than is good for them or using drugs in a way that, you know, isn't helping them as they, as they would see it or effectively disciplining their eating to a point that they're threatening their life by doing that. But when you ask people to describe the life that they want, their lives are always terribly similar. Yeah. You know, sometimes it would be almost impossible to tell whether this person has come to see me because they're hearing voices or whether this person has come to see me because they're starving themselves at some level. The life that they want to build is very similar. And so from a solution focused point of view, the work's the same Yeah. from that point of view. You know, obviously, if you bring a problem-centered way of working, 
the work could be hugely different. You know, working with someone who's been diagnosed as anorexic and someone else who's been diagnosed as psychotic, for example, you'd be expecting to work terribly differently. Yeah. But in solution focus, you don't. You know, when again, when Steve DeShazer was asked time and time again, Steve, you know, how do you use solution focus with people who are bipolar? And he, he would always say, it's the same. It's the same. How do you use it with people who've been bereaved? Well, it's the same. How do you use it with people who've been sexually abused? It's the same. Can... So the process of constructing or talking with people in such a way that the new lives that they want emerge from the talking is the same. Mm. And it doesn't really matter what people come with. That's hard to take on too. That's hard to take on board, I think. Can you resist? Um, there is this... Um... When when I came to do the the first um, training uh, to breathe, um, the last three days uh, you were the trainer, but the first day was Chris, and I remember um, at the end of the day, or, or probably at the end of the I don't know, let's say at the end of the day, I went to Chris and I say, so Chris, um, um, I have understood, so. Uh, please tell me if I'm right and, and and explain my theory. So solution focus work in this way because this led to that and this, you have to do that. And Chris uh, look at me and, and, and ask him, is that right? Is this the way it works? And, look, and Chris look at me and say, I don't know. <laughs> Can you resist to... Um, having a theory to uh, create a theory, because th this is actually a very interesting point, because Steve Scheiser said, um, let's be size the, the theory, you know, because I, I I think that he said that because he, he wanted to say um, theory is a framework, a frame. The risk is that you uh, Re remain in that frame and that you are not able to go out from that frame when you need that. But of course you always have a theory to follow, you can't have a theory, you just can be not aware of what yeah. theory are you uh, following. So uh, what do you think about that? Is that hard to um, not giving an explanation? Uh, look, Flavio, I... I, I... I think it's interesting. Steve, you're absolutely right. Steve, when he was asked what's the theory in solution focus, he'd respond by saying there's no theory. And so when people then would say, well, what is solution focus then? Steve would say it's a description. It's a description of a way of interacting with clients that's associated with clients changing. All right. And so it starts, in his view, as a description, and then implicitly becomes the proposition. Hmm. At Brief in Milwaukee, this is what we do. Our clients seem to change. You try it, it might change for you, it might work for your clients. Your clients might change. So he said it was a description and there was no theory. But if you read Steve's books, they're full of theory. Yeah. <laughs> they're full of theory. And, um, you know, you could see less theory in, no, no, well, yeah, less theory in his first two solution focus books, Keys and Clues. But when he moves on to putting difference to work, you begin to see much more theory coming into it. And when then you read his fourth solution focus book, his fifth book, words were originally magic it's a very difficult book and it's a very difficult book which i've read a number of times don't find it easy i still don't and it's difficult because the theory is difficult and he's moved into a world of 
Wittgensteinian philosophy, of language games, of social constructionism, all of that. And it's not easy stuff. But the question I have is, do you need to know all that stuff in order to be a really effective solution-focused practitioner? And my view is you don't. I don't think you need to know anything about Wittgenstein. I don't think you need to know anything about Derrida and social constructionism and all of that in order to be a really effective solution-focused practitioner. So the way I would see it is the theory is, as it were, a bolt-on, something you add on to the model, but is not necessary. Now, I also think that it's virtually impossible for people to have no theory. Yeah. I just think we're human beings. We generate little theories of some sort or another. And I think the current in the solution focus, there are a number of different little theories. Yeah. And the little theory you have actually influences the way you use the approach. So some people have stayed quite quite close to Duchesne's initial thinking, which was essentially strategic. That, you know, if you want to put it in its simplest, that behavior is patterned, that problems are uh, uh, live within patterns of behavior, that if you change the pattern, as soon as you change your pattern, you have the possibility of other things changing. Mm. There's a terribly simple, minimal little theory, something about the patterning of behavior, if you like. And then other people, I think, move to more of a sort of narrative sort of idea about what's going on. That as human beings, we story our experiences, we construct narratives. And the narrative I construct out of the raw material of my lived life isn't just a description but at some level it becomes something of a prescription in terms of what's possible so the way i construct my narrative is both a way of understanding what's going on but very much influences the future and you hear lots of people who actually when you ask them to talk about their ideas about change, they come up with something that in essence yeah. is narrative at its heart. And I think there are a number of others. You know, there are other people who will tell me this solution focused stuff, it's all about self-esteem, isn't it? So, maybe, perhaps. Yeah. Maybe it is for you. Yeah. It actually isn't for me, but uh, maybe it is for you. And if you have that idea it's about self-esteem, then actually it's going to influence the questions you ask and how you ask them. You're actually going to listen differently. You're going to listen to your different client differently. So I think that it's absolutely inevitable that we're going to have theories. I think human beings are theorizers. That's what we do. And I think it's quite useful to be aware of your theory, you know, so that you're not unknowingly theorizing yeah. in your work. Mm. So you need to be aware of it. And I would say that you need to hold it lightly rather than over-believing in it. It's just an idea. Yeah. It's just one way of explaining things. Who knows if it's true yeah. at that level? You know, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Not. Some context is useful and some it's not. But everyone, I, I don't believe anyone who says they have no theory of change. I don't believe it. It's impossible. That's a theory, probably. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, listen, usually my interviews last uh, 30 minutes. We are at minute oh my goodness, 45. We it's that. okay, it's okay. And I have the last question because it's the question I always ask at the end of the interview. So I wanted to continue for other 45 minutes, but it's impossible. Maybe another interview, part two. So my last question is... Um, Suppose that tomorrow, no, oh yes, suppose that tomorrow (laughs) you will see a a therapist and um, you want to um, give him or her a suggestion to uh, an exercise 
that he or she can practice in his um, common day life to improve a skill that uh, they can use uh, during their work with clients. Um, what, what will be the skill, what will be the exercise you will suggest them? Okay, um, I mean obviously there are potentially a number, but one that I think is worth practicing is an exercise that would help us to learn how to stay very, very close to the client's position. Mm. And so we could ask the person a question. And they could say, you know, what are your best hopes for talking together? And they answer. And every question we ask needs to take account of the client's last answer. So it needs to build on the client's last answer. Oh. So if the person says, I'd be happier, mm. no, you'd say, so how would you know that you are happier? Well, you know, maybe I'd have a little bit more energy and I'd like myself more. And if you found that you were to have a little bit more energy and you liked yourself more, difference would that make mm. well you know i probably i do more and i get more done you know at the moment i so hard to get stuff done and if you found that you were able to get stuff done what would particularly please and on you go so just always building your questions yeah. on something that the client has just said I think that the core skills of solution focus are conversational skills and a core element of conversation is listening and building on what people have just said. And I think that's a really, really useful just little skill to practice. You could do it with a colleague. Yeah. So you can ask your colleague a question and you go 10 minutes mm -hmm. one way and then you reverse roles and do 10 minutes the other way I love all that. the time building 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 and trying not to put any words in that aren't necessary for the question so you're working with the client's words yeah. all the time apart from the ones that are necessary for your question and if you were happier and more confident of course you put in and if you were but the happier and more confident comes from the client so just practicing staying really 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 close I yeah i so, love that that's an idea yeah i love that um it's something that i um i love and i probably will suggest to my students because it's something that you can practice also in your everyday life okay uh, Heaven, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this interview. Um, I hope to see you soon and uh, in person, of course. And uh, please say hello to Chris and Harvey. And I will. And uh, let, let me just say that yeah. it is a huge pleasure to me to see Solution Focus appearing in Italy. Yeah. Because um, I, I know you know that um, my mother's family is from Italy. And um, I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. And I've had family members who talk to me about therapy and, you know, they have no idea of solution focus in Italy. And it is just lovely to see la terapia centrata sulla soluzione turning up yeah. in Italy. I, I love it. I love that. And so I'm very, very happy to talk about that. I think it will spread... Um very quick um i hope to have you here in italy you chris and harvey soon to take some classes uh yeah to uh, one day one day yeah yeah of course when we're allowed out when we're allowed out <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you heaven have a pleasure it's a pleasure bye bye